Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very Very good. Good. There's several people there. Yeah, they're, they're all from the team and everybody wanted to be there when we have a chat. Okay, all right. That's nice. So first, I would like to hear from you. You have worked on some of, uh, been associated at least with some of the most iconic uh, Disney movies. So t- tell us a little about your experience. Uh, well, it was it was uh, extraordinary, and it was also something I wasn't expecting because I come from a theatre background. I'm very much of the theatre director and producer. My background before Disney, and by chance, I went to work for Disney. And and I and even and that was to work on a film called Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Disney, some people I knew at Disney were looking for somebody in London, where they needed to build a studio for Roger Rabbit, who knew how to make you know how to get things done, like you know as a, with a sort of producer hat on. Yeah. And that's how I came to I came to Roger Rabbit. But even during the making of Roger Rabbit, I'd always intended that I would return to the theatre. You know, it was a very nice job. It was very exciting. It was a crazy film and. And then towards the end, you know, Disney started talking to me about coming to America and my wife had just given birth to our first child. So we went, okay, we'll go to America for a couple of years. And, and of course it just escalated. So it, it, it was a career change in my, I suppose, in my early thirties, which was completely unexpected. But I, what, I, what I found most rewarding about a- a- animation is the timelessness of of the films because they're fantasy and they're you know they don't they don't they don't date like a live action film dates because of course if there's an actor you know what they look like now or you you know, you you just recognize that it's that it's a, it will always be of its period whereas animation nobody knows so i love i love that aspect of it but my my real moment when i um i suppose understood the medium a little bit more it was not because of the artists who are wonderful, but it was the artists who had the ability to act or not act, but understand acting, understand, you know, and of course they're working with a voice track. The physical movement, our physical body language is so important that the timing and the motivation for moving, turning ahead, uh, opening the eye wider, you know, th- this is all an understanding of performance. And that was my way of going, okay, from my theater background, you're actors, you do this, you do this, you know, but in a, in a sort of this linear pipeline, which is animation. So, but Disney was, was fantastic. And I got to work, you know, with some of the greatest artists. I got to meet the nine old men who were still with us, you know, so I looked to, you know, Frank and Ollie and Ward Kimball and people like, you know, that I got to meet and, uh, you know, I sort of, you know, I was there as, uh, luckily there, luckily, that I was there as Disney came back to animation. For many years, they hadn't really, you know, animation had drifted. And suddenly there was a, thanks to Roy Disney, um, there was suddenly a resurgence in in animation and uh, an impetus and, a, and, a, and, and really made up as well with young artists, directors, getting getting an opportunity. Uh, you know, with young writers, you know, Howard Ashman, and you know, who wrote the, the lyrics to Little Mermaid and, and um, mm-hmm. Beauty and the Beast and most of Aladdin, um, you know, inspire, you know, that combination of people coming together, it was a sort of rebirth. It wasn't, it wasn't trying to go back to, Dis- to old Disney, and, I, and it wasn't for lack of respect or wonderment at, at the talent of those, but it was we, you know, we're young and we're, we're doing this. We're going to use all that experience and everything, but we're going to make, you know, films um, that have a new sensibility to them. And I think, and, uh, and they are, they're still Disney films, but there was, a, you know, the, the embracing of the musical and making that work. And so, but, you know, new artists, new design, you know, the likes of Glenn Keane, James Baxter, Mark Henn, you know, all these, uh, uh, Andreas, they are wonderful, wonderful artists who, are highly skilled at exactly the right moment. You know, the opportunity was there and they took it. And I suppose, you know, for me, that opportunity came my way, which was come to America, and I did. But it, but it, it, it you know, and it, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a goal of mine. It wasn't an ambition. But I'm glad I took the step. 
That, that's great. So uh, as we were talking, you've worked on, uh, again, coming back to the first question, some of the most iconic films of Disney, which are uh, kind of timeless, if not all their films. Uh, so uh, tell me what makes the story uh, such such uh, a global hit that it resonates with the entire audience of the world and becomes an epic. Well, I, I think the answer to that is in the is in what the story is about, and and if we, you know, you find um, a theme, an emotion is the right way to describe an emotion that. Is, can be felt in all of those countries. So, and of course, most of our emotions about family um, and relationships, despite different backgrounds, ethnicities, languages, everyone shares those same emotions. So it could be a child growing up and, you know, having to face changing, you know, that, that happens. That, tell me a country where that, there isn't an anxiety. So something people can relate to basically. And if you find that emotion, people around the world in every country can relate to it. I, you know, for me, that was the that was the Disney secret. You know, because I mean, you had to, you know, beautifully made films, but you 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 had to have a create a problem, and then have a couple of characters or one character that you really cared about whether they were successful or not, and that you could relate to that character because you understood the the emotional emotion he was going through. All right. Uh, so you said that uh, you liked working in India and uh, everything about India. So have you had a chance to check in in animation? I have. Well, I've, I've done a couple of films in India. Uh, yeah. I've worked with Prana, worked with folks, done a couple of movies down uh, with Toons down in Trivandrum. Oh, is it? Um, so, and, and, in, and all of those experiences, particularly in Trivandrum, you know, God's own country. Yeah. Um, I, I spent a lot of time, I, I, you know, and, and that was a, and I, well, I mean, it helps. I mean, the, the marvelous thing about India, um, of course, for me, of course, it's a culture I grew, I was fortunate enough to grow up with. So it wasn't a, mm -hmm. but, but equally it, it's, it's language, you know, and I, when, when realizing that, you know, the common, the most common language spoken by everybody in India is English. Yeah, you know, actually, I, you know, I learned all about all the different dialects and different, and which I, that was something I learned since coming to in India. Um, but it's very easy for me to come in and work with artists if I can communicate with them without going through an interpreter who may be a very good interpreter but not understand the, the, the real process of animation, you know. So it's okay. always more, it's not impossible. But that immediacy was, was great. And when people say, let's go for lunch or have some lunch, it, that's not a, that's not a hard thing. I'm just waiting for lunchtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, so it, when was it be, that you were in veg or non -veg. No. Oh, yeah. When was it that you were in Toons? And what projects were you working on? Um, I did um, Color City down there and, um, um, and Bunyan and Bay. There are a couple of films we were finishing up for the Exodus Film Group, and it was done as a partnership with them. But I'd known of Toons since Bill Dennis, you know, set it up, you know, many years before that. So I'd known of the, uh, of, of that. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're my cu couple of experiences, but I've visited many other studios. Uh, you know, I've lectured at Technicolor and, you know, when it was DreamWorks uh, unit. Uh -huh. there. Um, and, um, you know, stu you know with Deli I did some advice on Delhi Safari. Um, oh, like Delhi that. Safari. So, yeah, yeah. So, which I thought was a great idea, a great idea for a movie. You know, really, really good. Um, I thought that was, you see, that I, going back to your other question, I thought that was a movie that, you know, that wherever that movie played, people would understand that dilemma. That's in, you know, it's like this terrible virus that we're experiencing. Yeah. It is a shared experience. Yeah, I agree. You know, and, and, the, and, and looking after our environment is a shared necessity you know so when they make a film like that I, I i thought it was very very good i've always got comments on story or you could have done it but yeah I, I thought the concept and uh and the achievement of making it and I, that was done in pune i think wasn't it uh yes i think so pune yeah, i think was, a little bit in mumbai as well yeah so i you know i've got to you know i've been most fortunate you know to travel around i've taught you know some i've been to whistling woods and Oh. One of my master classes there, and, and what, and, and to arena, some of the arena schools, um, 
So, uh, yeah, it's given me a real uh, opportunity to, you know, and, and you, when you visit a country as a tourist, um, yeah, it's great. Okay. But it's through the eyes of a, a tourist, you know. Um, and when you come to work in a country and have that opportunity to really meet with people, and, and it's not so much about talking about the film, it's talking about life and ambition and family and just getting to know people, going to people's homes, which I, you know, I've been, you know, I class uh, Hari Varma, you know, a, a dear friend. Um, I love that guy, you know, uh, partly because we come from a similar background. He, he, uh -huh. He's in theater and, you know, and, uh, right. Right, I got, got to meet his wife and daughter and spend time together. And, that, you know, they're, they're very special to go to, to ha have that type of experience. Right. So, uh, actually, uh, in the recent times, at least, uh, animated movies in the West are being seen as uh, features which can be watched by young and adults as well. However, in India, uh, the thing is very different, very different. So, what can be done to make a film or a feature or any piece of content in animation which can resonate with the adults as well? Well, I, I, think, I think the change is going to come because... The, the distribution platform is never going to be quite the same again. You know, we are going to move to an online platform, but I, I completely understand the dilemma. I mean, you have a, you know, a wonderful cinematic culture, um, at, at making very different types of movies with very different not the structures, musical, you know, they're just, it's a, it's a, a wonderful art form. And I know an Indian family, when they go to the movies, they expect to be there for six hours as well. Right. And, and animated animation is for children, and that's seen at home, right, on DVD. That's the basic, you know. All kids programming and channels, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it really, there's no simple answer, but perhaps one day somebody will make a movie that, that does appeal to both, uh, you know, as indeed, you know, Disney and Pixar, many, many um, studios have been very, very clever at making a film very acceptable. You know, children love it. Adults have a great time, but they see something a little different in the movie. They, they get a, they get a, they have a more sophisticated or a more educated because of their age point of view of what of, of, of the emotions that are going on. It, it, it's a great skill to, to, to achieve that. And perhaps somebody will make that film. I mean, Delhi Safari in a way should have been that or could have been that type of movie. I mean, its the, its theme was so important to to an adult audience. And I, I, you know, Maybe yeah, I if know. Delhi Safari was released now, it would have been different. Yes. Well, I, that's an interest. That's a very interesting question. I think, you know, when we make movies, it's about there's a piece in there that, you know, you can make a find a good story, make it very very well, do a great you know marketing campaign and release it. There's something. There's that little extra. Is the the, the public have to be open for something like that, right. and that's a little bit of magic. And so I think that's a good point about Delhi Safari. It is about timing. If it was released today. Think it will be far more relevant, mm -hmm. or far uh, more understood, far more appreciated. Also, probably because of the advent of OTT platforms, now people would have uh, actually watched it online rather than. So, if a film opens in theater, people might think that okay, it's an animated movie. I won't go to the theater to watch it. Maybe OTT platforms could have helped. Do you think? I, I think so. I mean, I, but I think that's the marvelous future that we have. You know, or, you, as you know everyone is trying to make animated films at the moment, right? Yeah. It's a very important market. It works brilliantly on an online platform and there's a market for them. And you have uh, every studio plus, of course, all the newcomers all needing content, you know, for their platforms that compete right. with the other platforms. And particularly, you know, the Netflix is, you know, when, when, when we saw, Disney take back the content that had traditionally always been on Netflix because it, Netflix was the provider for that for that mm -hmm. for that type of content. But once Disney decide to build have their own platform, then of course they take the content back. So suddenly there's a bit of a shortage in certain areas, and one of them was family entertainment, right. you know, on, on Netflix. And but also you know the people there got a passion for it as well. You know they I, you know there's some great people working at these these companies. All, all having come originally from, you know, the, the, the studios, but yeah. every single studio is making animated films globally. There's loads of films made. Still, compared to the number of live action films made every year, it's tiny. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, last, last year, there were 27 films that were eligible for the Academy Award. That was a record. That's the most we've ever had that would, that would qualify. And they, but, you know, there were probably 300 live action films that technically qualify. So it's a very good place for an independent, um, you know, very good visibility. And if you get it right, it's, I believe it's still an underserved, marketplace and then additionally particularly since you know i came into the industry you know when i first started using computers to uh, you know uh, enhance our films or indeed in the end use a, a computer software to make the entire film you know in, in those early days the, the the software and hardware was was prohibitive yeah and then of course in the last years you know, we've seen the cost of capital equipment and software come right down, which is a fantastic thing that's happened yeah. because now it's about talent. It's about uh, how, you know, it, it used to be inaccessible uh, equipment and now it's accessible. And now it's like with a movie camera, a digital camera. You know, we can all have one. Right. Now uh, there are, are, we good at, are we good at using better. it? Yeah, that's the main question, I guess. Plus there are open source softwares which the independent people use now. So that has made yeah. things easier. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, we're seeing more work and I think there's more work to be done. And I, and I, and I think, I mean, I, I, what my hope is, and I work a lot in China and spent, been spending a lot of time yes. in China over the last few years. Uh, again, somewhat living and working. Um, Since 2015. My, my encouragement to, particularly in China, but it will be the same in India, is, is you need to look within for the great stories. I don't think India needs convincing of that as much as China does. China traditionally has always looked to the West and trying to emulate the West. And I, I firmly believe you have to um, obey a, 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 a storytelling structure that we, that we use. And that's live action or theater or anything. You know, there are certain ways to bring an audience in and take them on a, a, on a journey. So, but the content itself, can be from the region um, and I think you know from the country and uh, you know China is full of spectacular stories with emotional themes uh, and relationships between characters that will be understood around the world and I know India is the same yeah. but often you know but you do have to tell the story you know in a in a, within all what I'll, I'll call it a western structure that's not yeah. fair. Um, you know our storytelling structures go back thousands of years yeah. yeah. Right. Let's say the prevalent structure for now. Hmm. What people show. Uh, so I, I, I have a question, actually two questions from uh, my colleagues. They want to know about two films. One is Beauty and the Beast and one is Lion King. So uh, they say Beauty and the Beast has been uh, quite modern in terms of approach, dialogues, treatment in comparison to other Disney movies. That is what they believe. So what is your comment on that? Well, um, I, I don't think so. I, I, I'd like to give a different ex example to answer the question. We were very concerned, you know, in Aladdin with the brilliant performance of Robin Williams mm -hmm. uh, as the genie, a, a lot of what he said was very relevant to the period. Right. In 1992, something, I don't know. Yeah, about 92 it was released. Um, and, and I remember thinking to myself, I wonder, you know, in years to come, whether that's going to, it's going to put the film in a time period and, and therefore it won't work. That's not, that's not true because there was just something about the performance and the energy that the joke, you wouldn't have laughed in quite the same way or at quite the same thing nowadays because you wouldn't, you wouldn't get the, the nuance, the sophistication of what Robin was, was doing with certain jokes that was certainly worked to an older audience in that period of time. Um, so I, I, I think Lion King has proved that it is that is not considered a, an old film. I mean, hey, it's been remade, it's been re-released, uh, and it continues to enchant audiences. As I was enchanted as a child by films that were made way before I was born, right. the early some of the early Disney films. So it, I think, it's a luxury. Um, you know, that is unique to to animation, to our industry. 
Um, but yeah, I don't think they've done as much. I mean, modern idiom, I suppose. I, yeah, I didn't think so. I mean, the new film is interesting. Um, yeah. You know, uh, how amazing to take, I mean, to reimagine an animated film in a, vi in a well, because, you know, obviously this is still an animated film, but in a photorealistic Correct. environment. I mean, to just, re be, and, and to be, and then also making, you know, remaking all the other films with human, you know, with actors. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just a lot for the, you know, for the creators of these films back then, you know. Um, there's a lot of people who came together to, uh, and they came together at the right time in their lives, you know, and they created something very special in these films. All right. So uh, the sec second question is actually about Lion King. Uh, so it, it has been kind of timeless. Everyone who loves animated movie knows about Lion King. Even if you don't watch animated movies, you know about Lion King. Uh, what about that story makes it uh, such, such a crowd puller for decades now? For the kids today, because you 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 know it's a coming of age story, um, you know, and, and and or you know also known as a you know the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. So we we love these films where a character. You know, I could talk about episode four of Star Wars being, you know, a similar sort of structure. You take somebody who's a little bit too young, you know, but they're, they're likable and smart and they have to become, a, they have to become a leader. They have to learn. And of course, as, so as they're learning and growing up, so are we, you know, when, you know, we can identify with everything about the character, the fear of the older adult, you know, in Lion King, the scar. Yeah. Um, in fact, you know, in my talk um, tomorrow, I and I hope we'll have time, but I have got a clip from the Lion King actually, because there's one particular scene that I I think is just it's beautiful animation, beautiful voice acting, uh, lovely staging, uh, and I often just play and talk about it. Right. Um, but it's that little, you know, that little lion cub, you know, vulnerable, and he and he becomes the Lion King, and if he becomes the Lion King, so do we. We we go with him on, and then ironically, as uh, as Luke Skywalker becomes a Jedi Knight, so do we, you know, because we go on that on that journey. The journey, yeah. And that makes the film very accessible. We like those types of stories. All right. So uh, right now, there there have been a lot of uh, just. Uh, what you were talking about, a lot of animated films which are very famous or which are very famous till they like The Lion King or, or Jungle Book or Beauty and the Beast, they have been transformed into, let's say, live action films because that's the category they are getting nominated in. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so what should uh, the makers or what do the makers keep in mind while making those into live action? Are there certain pointers? Well, I think they've got a roadmap, and I think you know because it, it's a it's a structure. The original filmmakers are still with us, so there's there's reference there if they if they wish to have it. Um, but I think I think what they they, they you know they've got something that, they, that that is considered great. So their problem is they've got to add something to it, and that's not by changing the story um, because that doesn't work. It, it's about the way it's done, the performances. Um, so it appreciates the, the the original, but it's sort of reimagined, and, and I think that's a very very tough thing for, for to do, because we're going to see the live action one because we it's like going to see a sequel to a movie. Okay. The sequel actually has to be better than the first movie, because our expectation is here, and, and you have to you have to be here with your you know so. Um, it, it, and that's tough to do. So I think they had a, 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 a tough call, even though there'd been audience come see it and it wasn't, I don't think it was ever going to be financially a, a particular risk, but it, ultimately it would risk the entire Disney name if it failed because it's right. playing with already legendary films. But I, but I don't, I, I quite like the idea they're doing it and I quite, I, and I'm never against sequels providing sequels work, you know, right. but more importantly, the more sequels you make, the more original films you need to make, right. you know, because it's very easy to sit back and say, well, why worry? We'll just make, you know, 
this, you know, number four, number five, number six, and it just becomes a franchise, somebody sits back. If you don't continually reinvest in that, uh, you, you, the, the business does fall apart. That's the key. You've got to keep, keep making new films, original films. Right. Uh, so two quick questions. Uh, which is your favorite animated movie and your favorite animated character from the movie? Oh, it, 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 I have various answers to that. Um, Okay. Wouldn't I, right? Right. Well, right. hey, I'm a producer. Why would I have a straight answer? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Um, it, it, the, the reason I hesitated because there are films that I've loved making, but they weren't necessarily the most successful. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, but Be Beauty and the Beast, well, Roger Rabbit, you know, is a, he just has to be because it was the first one. I, you know, I was learning as I went along, as we all were, because of the, you know, the way it was made. And, I was learning something new. And, you know, I, look, I think we all look back on that film as, it was unique. We built a studio in London, bought artists from all over the world to work in it. And it was, um, you know, it, and it made this one movie. And then we all went away. And some of us went to America, you know, but we, we still are all in contact with those original artists. So uh, Roger, and then we've already mentioned it, Beauty and the Beast, I love. Um, and I think probably, you know, I, I thought the genie in Aladdin, you know, favorite character. I mean, it was just, and that would be an easy one for people to say, and I perhaps should be giving you a more, you know, uh, unknown character within the, within the movie. Um, but Eric Goldberg's superb animation combined with Robin's work, it, the energy of the animation, uh, you know, I mean, it is, a, it's a gift of a, I mean, it, it's a gift I mean, it, for an animator. You know, he's working with these broad strokes all the time. But Eric Goldberg, wow, it was fantastic. So I suppose that. All right. Is my answer. So, so that's my long qualified answer. <laughs> sure. So that wasn't as straight as you said. It wasn't, but that's why I have to give you some background. <laughs> so uh, actually, I had this question in mind personally. So in India, what we are seeing currently for kids animated shows which are coming on TV, what they're doing is they're taking up Bollywood franchises from movie and they're making shows around them, like 20 minute episodes, 20 minute episodes. That's been the trend for a year and a half or more actually. It's a popular IPs. Do you think that can work for full length movies as well? Let's say a movie which involves a lot of action which can be done in animation. Uh, well, I, 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 let, me, let me put it in a COVID-19 Framework. There was a report, you know, in, in the in the trades in Hollywood, in the trade newspapers, that all the studios, because they were unable to shoot live action mm -hmm. because of the lockdown, and because they knew that however they come out of it, it's always, you know, it's going to be a much more difficult way to make a film. But the animation community, the animated films are still being made because we, they really can work at home, you know. Yeah. And so the major studios started looking at all of their live action projects in development. Okay. And looking at all of the stories and seeing if any of them could be reimagined in animation. Right. So, my, so I think the answer to your question is yes. I think you should look at anything. I think it could be reimagined. Why not? And that may be that, you know, you asked me, uh, we, we were discussing earlier, you know, this split between animation in India is only for children and only at home. Uh, you know, and Bollywood is in the cinemas. Well, if you make an animated film of a of a well known Bollywood story oh, yeah. film, and you use all of the criteria that we talked about earlier, that you know it has to be a fresh, it has to have something more than just a a repeat. So everyone says, "Oh, wow, it's fantastic! It's been reimagined for animation. How brilliant!" I think that may be the bridge. To getting adults to watch animation or accept it because it's going to be a Bollywood film that they know reimagined here. So that may be the the door that people go, oh, I want to watch that because I I love the film and now I want to see how they did it in animation. So maybe a, a popular IP can bring out the sequel in animation. Yeah. Well, look how many films. For how many films do you make in India a year? Three thousand. Yeah, possibly a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I know a lot of them maybe have very similar story ideas and things like Absolutely, that. But, yeah. Hey, you know, there's enough 
content in India. It okay. may be trying to find, with so many films, trying to find the right one. And, and often, as you, as, as you know, you know, Bollywood movie is traditionally much longer than an anime, than a live action yeah. film in the West. Okay. It often has an intermission, right? It does, it does. And, uh, you know, so, so that adaptation may be challenging because we know the longer an animated film lasts, the more expensive it is to produce. So, you know, yeah. um, so there are certain pressures. But I think it's, I think you should, people should explore anything. Mm -hmm. I just don't think they should ever decide to only explore one thing. Right. You just got to go look everywhere, you know. See, uh, the question, the thing that you mentioned was actually going to be my next question. Since we are living in COVID times, and animation is an area which uh, can still thrive being uh, a work from home model rather than live action. So, uh, do you think more and more people will be looking into animation, even though the audience is not as mature or uh, inclined to consume animated content? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I, I do. Uh, you know, uh, and I, I'm hoping over time we'll see we'll see more and more uh, films that are um, that are targeted more to an older audience. It's a very difficult transition, very very difficult, because part of growing up is seeing live action movies, action action live action movies, and not watching animation. Because now I'm a I'm 11 years old, and I think I'm a teenager. You know, I the so we always have we always have that, but I, I you know I'd love to see a horror movie, a really scary movie in animation. Oh, yeah. So and I... not for and not for children, you know, not for children. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm hoping over to animation, hopefully you know in the years ahead will be just be considered a way of making films, a way of telling a story, and and not oh it's it animation is for children. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way of making a movie. It's an alternative way of making a movie and therefore the story should be as broad as possible. But transitioning to that is, is challenging for all of the prejudices of people have, thinking, oh, well, animation's for children. So, it, 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 but I, I think over time we're gonna see this. It's such, it's such a wonderful way of, of telling a story. And do you think the COVID lockdown is gonna be kind of like a catalyst to it? Yeah, well, I think it's pushed a lot of things ahead, isn't it? A lot of things. I mean, you know, I, I'm cook. You know, well, I like to cook, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a, well, I've been had the opportunity to cook. I've been baking my own bread, and you know, it's my. So I've been doing things I didn't do, and I don't want to give up some of these things I've started doing. Okay. My yoga has got better. My yoga is much improved. I have time to do yoga, and um, so this is <laughs> my cricket is terrible because I can't watch any well I watch old games <laughs> reruns right. um, so but I think this the idea of working at home I think is more productive uh, this is a generalization I think okay. working at home providing there are no distractions is better I know many artists who are much better after midnight they like working in the night right you know, they're terrible in the mornings mm -hmm. and and I like the idea people, you know, they must have deadlines to work to. I think that becomes a, you know, if you say you're going to deliver the scene on Friday, it must arrive on Friday. But the way in which it's delivered, you know, into the thing, straight to the director's inbox, and the ability to use Zoom as we're doing, hey, we're looking at each other, we're having a conversation. Right. And, and because we've been forced, I hadn't heard of Zoom two or three months ago, and now I'm an expert. I think I can do little things. I think all of us are. You know, yeah. so, so, yeah. Um, and, and because we've been forced to use this, we've actually gone, actually, this is really good. It's more efficient. I don't have to drive somewhere. I get more done. I have more time with my family. Uh, and I think there's some benefits that will never go away because I think it suits everyone. And to the employer, he can change the size of his studio. Right. You know? You know, it can be a smaller, you know. Yeah, yeah. Know, I think building. a lot of companies and, are and then you, looking at it. Yeah, yeah, and you can you can hire the very best artists from around the, because I think also, and I think India's demonstrating, because Indian animation is so good and so powerful, it's because of the inter, and we talked language at the beginning, but it's because of the interaction, mm -hmm. you know, internationally. India's always enjoyed this, you know, first of all, you know, Mike Young doing, you know, so much work you know, making his TV series in India to DreamWorks coming in, you know, 
right. you know, Prana's experience in, 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 in the West. And, you know, there's been a much greater exchange um, with, with India and, and the rest of the animation community. Um, and I think, you know, with this sort of lockdown and, and things working online, uh, it doesn't really matter who we hire and where they are in the world. You know, so we, over time we might truly become, you know, become more and more global um, in our in our approach to the filmmakers that that come together. Yeah, I think you know, I, I think the certain departments perhaps need to be together a little bit more. Perhaps the story department, yeah. or your boarding, or you know, but but I think a lot of work could be done um, individually alone with conference yeah. calls, and I think you know wherever possible. You know, perhaps it's one day a week in the studio. You right. know, that you come in, because you must be careful not to lose the sense of camaraderie between mm -hmm. the the artists and the energy that can put into the film. Right. You, that, you know that that soul, that passion comes out, and and that does translate into into the film. Right. Um, and so you have to be careful you don't lose things like that. But you have to talk about it as long as you talk about things like that as the potential problems to everybody, and you. You know, say these are the advantages, these are the disadvantages, and and, what, and as long as everybody shares the the challenge, hey, it'll work. Right. So, uh, as you said, that <coughs> you transitioned from theatre to live action. I mean, animation. So th there might be a lot of people who would probably opt for this after uh, the the lockdown, or in terms of getting more work, or in terms of interest as well. What suggestion do you have for them? Maybe maybe somebody who's a fresher and like doing theatre so far just wants to get into animation. Well, first of all, you know, get an education, get get some training, find out about it, read some great animation, you know, books, Richard Williams' book, you know, animated survival, you know, get into the the art form. But but anyone who wants to come into the, the animation industry, get into the film industry in your head in terms of storytelling and how movies are are made and told, it, it, it makes no, it should make no difference between animation and live action as regards to the, to the, to the story. Um, it's not so much I can give advice on how to do that, but what I, whenever you have crises like this, the world changes and people adjust to those changes. And some people who can see the opportunity and see how to um, provide something that people want, which are, they wouldn't have, well, like Zoom. You know, Zoom was a very small company six months ago. It is now a massive company. So now it, it's, it, 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 it had a system and it, well, actually, you know, if it wasn't for COVID, it would be just another system. Right. Right. And I think for a lot of people about what they're doing and what their ambition is for the future, is, is in trying to look forward to see what that future is going to be because it's not going to be the same. And it'll right. either be very, very different, it'll depend on world economy, and there's a whole broader sense of, of issues. But just the way in which we work on a day-to-day -day basis, I think employer and employee are going to see, are seeing the benefits of people working from home. Right. Okay, uh, I'll come to my last question. This is a two-part question. Uh, where uh, taking everything in uh, consideration, the the lockdown, the current economic state, the state of the industry, both in India, in UK, and around the world, where do you see uh, animation industry headed in the next five years around the world, and in your opinion, in India as well? Well, I, I think it, it it begins to play an even more important part in the in the entertainment world. For all the reasons we've talked about, it, it, you know, animation has not had to stop working. The films are continuing. They don't have the same restrictions that actors, unfortunately, have to deal with on filmmakers because of the the the, the um, pandemic. They work alone, and so that's going to that that's the opportunity. And I think animation is going to grow into that. Um, and take that on. They're going to be more important. More 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 companies more platforms need animation. You know, uh, the most important thing is to is when developing an idea or a story, just keep in mind who the audience is, who are you making this film for? 
and, and doesn't mean to say you're sacrificing your creativity in any way whatsoever, but it does mean that you focus on what you're doing. And, and, uh, and always remember it's for an audience and you now will have places to present your ideas. Right, right, right. And where do you see the uh, Indian animation scene going? Well, I just think it becomes part of that, part of that growth. Okay. I mean, Indian, I mean, the quality of work is getting so much better. Mm -hmm. the, the, and it, and it, I, would, I would sort of think that, you know, animation in India was immature, and now I think it's mature. I think it's in its late teens. I think you're starting to see, you know, the real talent come out. It's been a, it's been a one hell of a learning curve, and it's difficult to talk about any country in right. one, in one sense. There's better, there's worse. But right. I mean, the love of animation, the love of filmmaking in India, it's in the DNA of everyone in India. Is the film is is telling stories visually. Right. That's what Hollywood is so it's in the DNA. All right, I think that will be it. Thank you so much for joining us and looking forward to your webinar tomorrow. All right, let's hope I say the same things tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Hey, thanks so much, yeah? Thank you. Thanks for doing this. Thank you, everybody, for listening in.